Hey everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about tripods and remotes. Stay tuned and let's get right to it. For much of my career in photography, I have thought of tripods as being a spontaneity and creativity killer, as opposed to being something that could be used to do something different. An example of this would be just simply using a tripod so that the images are sharp and not there's no motion blur. In a similar vein, using a remote trigger for my camera has always been something that I would use so that I didn't shake the camera when I was doing a long exposure. Turns out there's a lot more stuff you can do with these devices. Another reason why I've never liked remotes and tripods is because I don't like to carry a lot of stuff with me. Remotes are very easy to leave behind or even lose and tripods add a lot of extra weight to your kit especially when you're walking around with a couple or with doing something that requires a lot of mobility. The other main issue when you're using a remote often is that it has to be plugged into your camera so that you can only walk a few feet away from it. The way that this has been fixed by Sony is that they've put out their remote commander which allows you to hook up to the camera via Bluetooth and allows you to have about a 30 foot range away from the camera. I'm using one of those right now and I use it to trigger my camera to start it recording a video and about, right now I'm about maybe six feet away from the camera. I also use it for when I'm shooting the, the images that you're going to see in a minute though. If you're wondering what this ugly pink thing is, it's a lanyard that I use to keep myself from losing my remote. Either I have it around my neck or if it's on the ground or on a desk somewhere, that bright pink color lets me find it a lot easier than it would otherwise. I have about 5,000 little black devices that look a lot like this that I can't find oftentimes. So this helps me in that regard. As well as having my main tripod that I use, which is actually right now being used to hold up this camera. And it's one that can go a little bit above my eyesight level. I also have a very small uh, travel tripod that I use to bring pretty much everywhere I go. Reason I pick such a small one is because I don't want to leave it behind. And this one, I can carry it with me. It's the Benro Slim Travel Carbon Tripod. Um, and I'll leave some details for that below. The biggest selling feature for me for with this tripod is that it only weighs 1.2 kilograms or 2.6 pounds, which means that there's no point leaving it behind when I know I can use it wherever I go. What I'd like to do now is take you through a whole bunch of examples of things that you can do with when you're using a tripod and a remote. Things that you can't do without them, in fact. So let's have a look. This is a basic example of what you can do with a tripod and a remote trigger. In this photo, I was on a hike with my family recently when I wanted to take a group shot. I was able to put my camera on the tripod and then once in place I was able to focus using the focus function on the Sony remote and then trigger the camera and take multiple photos to make sure that I got a good one. Very easy setup and no problem. It's rare to have good family photos so I'm really happy that I had this combination of gear to be able to do this. Now moving up a level in complexity. In this image I have my camera on a tripod and I'm using my remote to trigger it again. But this time I'm leaving my shutter open for 13 seconds so that I can get that blurred veiled effect of the waterfalls here in Ottawa at the Rideau Falls. I should also mention that I'm using an ND filter in this shot so that I can leave the shutter open as long as I like. This is also a long exposure shot with the shutter open for 30 seconds. I had my aperture set to probably about f16 so that I could leave the shutter open for that long. On the right hand side I ran up along the edge while swirling an LED stick. The flash went off when I started the exposure just before I left and then I came back on the left hand side so that it gave the full on effect of the LED. The rest of the examples that we're going to go through now have to do with creating composite images where many images are composite piled together to make a single image in the end. In the one that we're looking at here, there are 11 separate wedding party members who were individually lit using the same light and then compiled afterwards in Photoshop. Having the camera on a tripod so that the image doesn't move at all and using the remote to fire off the flash was essential in order to pull off this image. This image has a similar dark mood to the last one because of the exposure. The camera is on a tripod and the light is very close to the couple. Two images were taken. One was taken without the light and one was taken with. The light was then later removed in post-production. 
Like the last image, I took two photos, one without me and the flash in it, and another one with the light source. Afterwards, I was able to remove myself and any unwanted flash from the image. This is a commercial composite image that was achieved by using a regular shutter speed on the people on the left-hand side while using a long exposure for the people on the right-hand side. I think I used maybe five or six images for this and combined them all to have a sense of working on the left and people in motion on the right. Here's an example of using a tripod and a remote while doing architectural or real estate photography. As you can see from the photo, you can see everything clearly, but the windows are too bright and the reflection off of the table is also too bright. So what if I wanted it to look like this? In this image, which is actually part of the other image that we just looked at, the windows are no longer blown out and the reflections on the table and the floor are also not blown out. Also missing is the color cast that we had coming from the floor that was reflecting onto the walls. These six images are the ones that were used to make that last image that you just saw. The top left one is the original image that we looked at before it was processed. So the first one being the ambient shot, then there are a few flash shots used on the windows so that they balance and have the right exposure for outside. Then a few other bouncing off the ceiling shots that you can see along the bottom that were all then compiled in Photoshop to look as realistic as possible. If it were not for the tripod holding the camera steady for every shot and the remote used to trigger the camera so that I could hold the flash in various spots, this would be impossible to achieve. This is another example of the same technique, uh, but a little easier to follow. So if you look at the top image on the left, you can see my ambient shot. The one beside it is a brighter flash shot and on the bottom is a direct shot at the window so that I can get the proper exposure for outside. And here's the result. Again, I'm using my tripod to make sure that the camera is held in place and I'm using my remote so that I don't shake the camera when I push the shutter button and also so that I can trigger the camera from a distance. Let's take this technique one step further and use it for portrait photography. In this one, you can see that I have my daughter standing in front of the area that I'd photographed previously and I'm using a small softbox and a flash off camera but in hand so that I can light her properly for the background. The other three shots are taken just like before where I have my ambient shot, a flash shot and then a window shot. And this is how it turned out when I added them together. The benefit of shooting this way is that I was able to use the same flash for three different shots and I was able to shoot wide open at f1.8 while balancing the bright sunlight outside impossible otherwise. My father and I decided to make a composite photo that looked like many people all doing different things at the same time. I changed my clothes seven times and we took seven different poses. Here is what the final image looks like. Pretty cool, hey? So which tripods and remotes are you using these days? Let me know in the comments below. If you like this video or learned anything from it, please feel free to subscribe or press the like button. This will help me grow my channel and I'll be able to do more videos like this in the future. In the meantime, stay safe, have a great day, and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks a lot.